everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 66. And I've spent quite a lot of time since the end of last episode moving some stuff around, making the base look a little bit tidier. And uh, the first thing I've gone ahead and done is moved my applied energistic system. And uh, this is kind of the thing that kicked off the whole organizing the base thing because uh, as of the end of last episode, we were kind of running out of channels for all of our stuff because right now we have like all of this hooked up and uh, this guy over here quite a lot of stuff here hooked up all of these guys down here hooked up with storage buses and we were using a heck of a lot of channels for a heck of a lot of stuff and so what I wanted to do was rearrange it so that we had more controllers and more space to do stuff because let me tell you the underneath section of this floor here there is like a one gap space between the uh, the floor here and the roof of the blood magic room the cabling under this floor was an absolute nightmare before last episode so what i've gone ahead and done is i've rearranged all that i've rearranged all the cabling we now have more than enough channels to hook up everything we need and more which is brilliant i also made this guy over here the me interface terminal which allows us to see everything inside of our uh, interfaces basically around the base so basically all of the things in these guys i can see all of these recipes from this thing over here which is very nice i can see what i can craft at a nice little glance without having to run over to the the other end of the base. Uh, I made a few more changes. I moved the Railcraft stuff over to here. You'll notice this guy used to be over there. And then this guy, the Blast Furnace, used to be all the way back there. Kind of randomly in the Thorncraft room. Didn't really fit there at all. Uh, so I moved those over there. Added a few more tanks to this. Moved the uh, Auto Enchanter down into the floor. Tigger's Construct stuff got moved from up here down to here. And I think that's actually about it. It was only a few minor upgrades, a few minor tweaks to the base. But I think it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner. And we've got a little bit more space now to work with Applied Logistics. We've also got a bunch more storage as well, if we so wish to expand in the future. Now, what I want to work on today, what I want to start with, is I want to start by producing an unlimited amount of glass. I We use glass all the time. Like, all the machines, all the items, everything seems to use glass, and we never have any. And every time we do it, we have to grab some sound, we have to smell it, we have to wait for the glass to smell, and then we have to use it, which is a pain. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to use this guy here, the Draconic Chest... To, to make ourselves an unlimited amount of glass. Because right now we have unlimited sand, which is working out really nicely for us. We have 332,000 sand currently, which is kind of fantastic. So, if I was to grab some of this and throw it into the Draconic Chest, what I have done is, by default, it's set to auto-feed disabled. And I should probably mention that, by, that the, uh, the Draconic Chest here has the ability to smell items. If I put sand in here, it's going to smell that sand into glass, and it could smell up to five items at once. Like so. And you'll notice that for every single sand that we put in there just then, we get two glass back. If I put one in and we wait, we get two back. You'll see I put six in and we got 12. One in, we get two. It doubles the amount of sand into glass, which is kind of cool. Uh, not really a big bonus in terms of the amount of glass that we get, but it means we need less sand for twice as much glass, which is always nice. Now, one thing you can do in the Draconic Chest is select this little button down here, which is pull any smeltable item from the inventory, which means if I click this and then put the sand into the chest, it's going to automatically pull it down and smelt it. Now, I wonder if it's going to keep, if we click that, I wonder if it can keep all the stacks full. I don't know if there's a way to have it pulled to all of these or if it will only do that uh, if this first one's full. We're about to find out anyway because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to stick it back here. We're going to hide this a little bit, uh, much like I've hidden the uh, the production of nutrient distillation for the uh, the killager down in the mob killing room. But I'm going to go ahead and we're going to stick this, I think, maybe here for now. Yeah, so that's a good idea because it does need power. We do have a test rack providing power. It's at frequency one. That is our power frequency. And other than that, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to move this for a second, the wireless access point. And I'm going to stick that like maybe up there. It doesn't really matter where that is uh, in this room. And then what we're going to need is we're going to need an export bus to export all of the sand into this chest. And then all I'm going to do is put a storage bus on there to, uh, to, to, to access all of the glass. So... Let's have a look here. I think we have an export bus lying around already. We do. We have quite a few, actually. And then we should maybe have a storage bus lying around as well. And we do not. So well, let's go ahead and make a storage bus real quick. Do, do, do. We'll take one of you. And what are we missing? We're missing the interface. That shouldn't be too hard to make. And there we go. We'll take you and you and boom. Nice. So we'll stick that down right about there. We'll stick you down like that. We'll grab ourselves some ME glass fiber cable dash fluix. <laughs> they do have a ridiculously long name. Stick that there. And we'll stick that down like so. 
and they should both connect. Now, if we put sand on the X spot of this section, that should start exporting sand, which instantly is going to start getting smelted up into glass. Now, currently, the sand is only getting moved in one at a time. I think we can change that. Is it maybe let's have a look here. Let's have a look at the upgrades available from Applied Energistic. I haven't actually used these, I don't think, uh, ever. So let's go to Applied Energistics 2. Is there like a stack upgrade? We have Capacity, Crafting, Fuzzy, uh, Inverter, Redstone, Acceleration Card. Acceleration Card increases the speed at which they move. We could probably make a few of those, although we probably, yes, definitely don't have any of those, uh, those circuits. Do we have what it takes to make a calculation circuit? I know we can craft one. Let's see if we can auto craft 10. Oh, we're missing the pure Certus Quartz Crystals. That does not surprise me. Let's have a look. Can we do it? Like, do we have one or two? No, we don't have any pure Certus Quartz Crystals. Let's have a look here. No, we don't. Wow, that is a bit of a pain. It's a bit of a pain. Uh, as you can see, this is going to go ahead and do that. And I mean, to be fair, we don't really need to update it. You can see we are getting glass. And what's going to happen is this thing is going to fill up completely with glass. Once it's full of glass, no more sand will be allowed in until we take glass out. So once we take glass out, it's going to put more sand in. That sand's going to get pulled down to the bottom. It's going to get filled up again. It's going to turn into glass. And so basically, we are going to have a backlog of however many stacks this chest can hold of glass. And as soon as we use some... It's going to go away. So that's our glass system. It's a fairly simple system. You can hide it away now. And we just have an unlimited stack of unlimited source of glass right now because we also have uh, an unlimited source of sand. And that's pretty cool. Now, the next thing that I wanted to work on this episode, and actually, let's go, let's get our staff of traveling. I, I need to get used to using the staff of traveling to get about places. And also, we should put the uh, wireless range extenders back into this guy so we can actually use it. And actually, you know what? I'm going to make a few more of those. Let's make a few more wireless boosters so we can actually use this thing pretty much everywhere. I thought they were called wireless boosters. Wireless, they are called wireless boosters. Yeah, what? <laughs> Did I spell boosters wrong? Let's take eight more of those. Sure, let's see. What does that do to our range? I thought we made more than this, but our range is currently 105 meters. What are we missing? We are missing Fluix Dust. Yes. Do we have what it takes to make more Fluix Dust? We should have Fluix Crystals. We do. Let's pulverize a few of those up. And we don't really need this pulverizer set up to, uh, to pulverize blaze rods anymore because we're not using blaze rods in the blast furnace. So that is kind of pointless. But we'll take those and we'll make a few more wireless boosters. That should That's A, going to drain a lot more power, but uh, also it's going to increase the range of our uh, AE system's wireless capabilities drastically. So if we go all the way out here... And check it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. I have no idea what even, like, the maximum range on this thing is. I think it's pretty much, at, like, I guess 64 wireless range boosters inside there, which I guess will be an insane amount of distance. But uh, we can pretty much use our wireless uh, terminal here pretty much anywhere in the base now. And also, some people in the comment section uh, of the last episode did complain about this tree, which I completely forgot to get rid of uh, up until now. But I will actually go ahead and finish this thing off. I think that's the last log in there. This tree was a pain to cut down, by the way, guys. The logs do a really good job of hiding in the flipping middle of these leaves, but I think that's pretty much all of them. One more little feature that I did forget to mention is I added another... Uh, laser drill precharger to our laser drill and it's actually holding up pretty well we've both got full power and we also have a full backlog of power over in this guy here our energy storage sphere as well as i think a little bit of a backlog in some of these generators which is a complete lie we used to it seems like it's using up a little bit faster now we might have a little bit of a power problem in the future and that is kind of where i want to move to next so Currently, we have all of these culinary generators, and currently, if we were to go out to the wheat fields over here and look into this chest, we have a backlog of wheat. We have a lot of wheat, and I mean, we have a lot of wheat in this chest. This chest, this f field here, doesn't even have a fertilizer. If we put a fertilizer down here, this would be getting so much more wheat, so we have an excess of wheat, and we need to be able to use that in our culinary generators to get more power. Now, we could make a ton more of these culinary generators that are the AX culinary generators, but that would involve making a lot more of these, and I don't want to do that. I want to make a 64x version of these culinary generators. Now, the only problem with making a 64x culinary generator, and I think I'm taking damage from my blood wand here, I think, for some reason, I'm not too sure. But uh, the only problem making the 64x culinary generator is that this guy here, the transfer node of hyper energy, requires a bedrockium ingot, 
which is either got by uh, turning a using a block of bedrockium, which is eight bedrockium ingots, or by smelting an octuple compressed cobblestone, which is 43 million cobblestone uh, in one block. And that's kind of where I want to go today. We also you can also make it using. And uh, this thing here, which is just a block of diamonds, four quadruple compressed cobblestone, and four triple compressed cobblestone. But either way, we need compressed cobblestone. And currently, we have no way of doing that. And that is where this stuff over here comes in. So, what I want to do is we're going to put down some transfer nodes, and we're going to start to produce an absolute ton of cobblestone. Actually, do we have any transfer nodes just lying around? We do not. So, we're going to start by making some transfer nodes, and we're going to make a ton of world interaction upgrades. So, transfer node. We only need the one. Actually, let's type in node. It's much easier. We will take four, and of course, we're missing something. It would be far too easy if we weren't. I cannot believe that stone is something that we're missing. We need to set up a system uh, kind of like the one we just set up with sand, but for stone, I think. Uh, so we don't have to worry about stone again, because that's going to be a pain. We also need just some normal stuff. Uh, oh, we need even more stone, don't we? Because we need to be able to make the flipping stuff. Ah, okay. Let's do this. Let's make ourselves some stone slabs. Let's throw you down like that. And then I'm pretty sure it's just redstone and glass for the normal, uh, normal pipes. It is. We'll take you, and then we'll take the rest of you. You can go in there, and we should make ourselves four transfer nodes. Nice. Do we have any world interaction upgrades? We do not. All of our world interaction upgrades are currently being used. So world interaction upgrades. Helps if we can spell them right. Let's take as many of these. And now, of course, we need flipping sticks, which we're missing. Let's make ourselves, like, I don't know, 100 sticks. And uh, hopefully that won't run out anytime soon. I think we've got enough wood to, uh, to compensate 100 sticks. We'll also take you... And throw that in there. So we want to make as many of these pickaxes really as we can. Because the more of these uh, world interaction upgrades that we have, the more cobblestone it's going to produce per tick. And if we want to get to 43 million cobblestone, we are going to need an absolute ton of them. Uh, another useful uh, upgrade is the speed upgrade. Although I don't think we're actually going to need those. And I'll show you why once we've set this thing up. And also the stack upgrade allows the uh, the transfer node to move a stack at a time. Which is very nice. So we'll take both of those. And it looks like we do have some speed upgrades. So we'll grab those for now. Between episodes, I've gone ahead and made 10 cyclic assemblers of the resident tier, as well as all of these speed augments to make this thing as fast as is humanly possible. And we are also going to need a tesseract to set this guy up as well. So, the plan here is to make an ultimate cobblestone generating system and then compress it. So, we're going to put these down like so. Boom, boom, and boom. And then inside of each of these, we're going to put a couple... Oh, come on now. Work with me, game. There we go. <laughs> We're going to put a couple of these. Apparently, six each uh, is the current amount that we have. Come on. Oh, a little bit of server lag here. Hopefully, it's not too bad. There we go. <laughs> All right. We'll put those in there. We'll put a stack upgrade in each of these as well. Uh, I might have to relog if this thing doesn't come and like start working again. We do need one more stack upgrade. For some reason, I thought we had uh, less than this. But it's not mining these either, which it should be. Uh, okay, guys, let me go ahead and restart real quick, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a quick restart, and it seems to be working now. They have filled it with cobblestone. If you take that out, it fills it with more cobblestone. It's fairly slow. Uh, I would like to put more of these world interaction upgrades in them, but what we're going to do after that is we're going to put cyclic assemblers down, and I think to start with, we'll just put them down, like, directly on top of here. Now, as far as I am aware... Oh, let's not go in there, but our draconic armor is so amazing that it doesn't matter, really. Um, as far as I'm aware, the speed upgrades only increase the speed at which the items move, although I might not be right about that. If I put that in there... Yeah, I think the speed upgrade only increases the speed at which the uh, the transfer node transfers items from here to the cyclic assembler or to where it's going. And that's exactly why I put the cyclic assembler directly on top of the transfer node. Because if you make a long pipe system and have them go somewhere else, then the, the, the transfer node kind of searches block by block for for an ent for an inventory that it can like put the items into. Uh, so if you put it directly on top there, it shouldn't actually take that long. And a speed upgrade really shouldn't make much of a difference. We could put like one or two in, in each of these just to make it like a tiny little bit faster. But I really don't think it's going to make much of a difference. The main thing we're going to need is a button of these world, uh, world interaction upgrades. So let's go back here. We should have a bunch of sticks now, enough to make actually a ton of pickaxes. And again, Staff of Traveling would have made that much, much faster. Let's see here. World. Oh, are we out of power? What? Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we seem to be running out of power, guys. Just as I say that we're not going to be running out of power. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. All right, let's turn this thing off for a second. That's what's drawing most of our power, by the way, uh, is the laser drill. So it should come back on 
Hopefully any second now. Let me go check what the heck's going on here. All of our generators should be more than good enough to handle this. These are all still full. You guys are all full. We are producing maximum power. Currently our uh, big reactors are not on. We need to fix that. Uh, why? Why have you died? Why? 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 Why do you do this to us, game? Let me, uh, let me disable this real quick. That should stop this guy from getting any power, which it has. And then you should definitely come back on. There we go. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that between episodes. But for now, we need the world interaction upgrades. Let's do this. Let's make just a gazillion pickaxes. I'm going to do that uh, to make some space here. Okay, so a little while later, we've used about two or 3,000 iron, but we now have almost three stacks of world interaction upgrades. And I'm quickly going to grab uh, one more stack upgrade. Like so, we'll take you as well. And now we should be able to put 64 stack at first. Okay, so a little while later, the game did crash there. You missed a little bit of video because my recording software doesn't like it when the game crashes. But I am currently making some more of these redstone flux ducks. 25 should be enough. Uh, I'll go and show you what you missed. You only missed a tiny little bit of me setting up this tesseract over here and hooking up to all of these guys as well well as I think maybe getting the warp item ducts, I'm not too sure. Anyway, we now have all of these. These should all have power as soon as we set this to frequency number one. There we go. These things should start getting juice. They are. We are really low on power right now. What the heck? Is our AE system using that much power with the new wireless boosters in there? Let me go. Let's take a look at this for a second. Let's see. Uh, this guy up here is currently using and the server is being just a complete pain right now so this thing is using 189 e uh, ae per tick now i have no idea what the conversion is between a and redstone flux but we are using a significantly larger amount of power by throwing that in there more than four times as much which is kind of crazy so i'm just gonna take a few of those out for now and see how our power situation fares for the rest of today's episode are these guys filling up with a full now let's let's throw all of these in let's go boom oh, i didn't i didn't want to do that didn't want to do that let's go boom 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 and then boom 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 we'll throw all those in and we'll throw all those in we're then going to need a schematic for every single one of those as well as some schematics for obviously the rest of the cyclic assemblers but for now we'll just work on those first main three and i'll probably do the rest uh, off camera but let's see here we need some schematics which is just paper and let's see schematic paper and lapis like so so we'll take 18 of those <laughs> sounds sounds like a plan let's do that let's teleport over that's a lot faster and if we do this all we need to tell these guys is basically just to turn cobblestone into compressed cobblestone which is really easy to do boom boom and you will see very very quickly we end up with a stack of compressed cobblestone which is very nice and also very quickly the cobblestone fills back up as well which is very nice indeed so we'll do that for all of these we'll do you we'll do a tick and we'll do it over here we'll throw you in there and boom boom and tick nice then we need to hook up all the rest of these with some warp item ducts so we'll do this to start with we'll kind of have it come out like that just to keep it a little bit symmetrical and like that and then if we hook this up to i was gonna hook it up to there but i think instead what i will do is do this uh, actually let's not do that let's not waste uh redstone flux ducts here let's just put that there that should provide all of these with power so these should start moving items instantly into here you can see this thing is now full of compressed cobblestone we'll throw that in it does need power so we we, we can go ahead and do this i guess to power all these guys and put that like there that's gonna power that and then this schematic is just like the same as the last one but this time with compressed cobblestone that's gonna turn all that into double compressed cobblestone which we're then gonna turn into a triple compressed cobblestone and then, of course, into quadruple compressed cobblestone. This one, I think, is not set up right. It is not. We need to have that one blue. That one. Oh, come on now. That one blue. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Is that what's that? Five? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. All right. That should be working. Where are we getting? So we get to here. This one needs a schematic of triple to quadruple. You can see it's getting very low very fast here. We've got a few quadruple, but we don't have uh, enough quadruple to actually make a quintuple. We can do this and tell it how to do it, but it currently can't make 
actually a quadruple compressed cobblestone. So it should be working through here. Yeah, we are getting a bunch of these, but right now it's actually not all that fast. And the reason is that it's just not producing enough. Jeez, I figured, well, I mean, I'm, I've done this before. I've done the whole trying to produce an octuple compressed cobblestone, and it is pretty slow, and it's a pretty laborious pro uh, process. It takes a long time. But you can see that the cyclic assembler is currently just tearing through the amount of uh, the amount of cobblestone this thing is producing. I don't think putting any more of these in actually increases the speed. You can see now it's doing like 16, then 13. Maybe it does increase the speed, having more of those in. But or maybe, yeah, I think it would increase the speed. But as you can see, it's still going to take us quite a while to get up to octuple compressed. We only have five quadruple compressed uh, at 6,561, which is not all that high, but it's kind of, <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty good. We have, uh, we have a few there. We have about 30,000 cobblestone right now of the 48 million that we need for the octuple compressed. That is quite a ways away. And we also need to get, of course, 64 culinary generators. Uh, actually, I think we need eight of these, right? Actually, I think we could. Let me try this. Let's have a look here. Can we make a 64x culinary generator right now? I think we can. Because all we need is eight of these and one of these. And we can make the bedrock human ingot, of course, out of with the diamond block, which I think we might actually do. So let's let's try this. Let's take one. Oh, come on now. Work with me here. Can I not do this? Oh, I thought I could do that. Let's take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. And then also deposit all of this flipping toast and cobblestone that is now plaguing our inventory. Get rid of all of those. Also, we do need to speed up the um, the other cyclic assemblers. I don't, I don't think it's really going to matter if we put the speed upgrades into the other cyclic assemblers, especially uh, the ones later on down the line. This one seems to be doing... Uh, oh, and the server is playing up. There we go. This one seems to be doing a more than good enough job of uh, processing all this without the speed upgrades in them. So I don't really think we needed those. But if we decide to add more cobblestone generators, which I might do between episodes, we have more than enough iron to put uh, a stack of world interaction upgrades in quite a few more of these uh, transfer notes. I might set up a few more cobblestone generators between episodes. But for now, let's grab some quadruple and some triple compressed cobblestone. And let's see about making ourselves... An octuple compressed. We need what? We need... Oh. Did that actually... Oh, we made a quintuple. Nice. All right. I'm going to take that anyway because I don't... I want to turn it back into uh, some quadruple and some triple. Uh, let's head back over here. Hopefully, the lag goes away because it's being really bad right now. Let's get rid of all the toast. The toast is a pain in the backside. Get out of here. And then let's turn you into nine quadruple. I think for this, we need four quadruple? Yeah, four quadruple and four triple. So we've got all the quadruple. One two, three, four. That's going to get us nine triples. That's fine. Let's make a block of diamonds real quick. Like so. You can go there. And then this should actually be a lot easier than I thought. So one, two, three, four. Get rid of you. And then one, two, three, four. That gets us the bedrockium ingot. We can then combine the, that up with four transfer nodes of energy in the uh, the QED over there, which is, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> the the bedrockium ingot is extremely heavy. And you'll notice my FOV goes down immensely when we are having when we have it in our inventory which is a bit annoying i'm not gonna lie it's a little bit annoying but uh, it's fine so we need four of these which is 16 more transfer nodes which shouldn't really be too big of a deal but uh, could take a little while and there we go we've now got four of these transfer nodes of normal energy and if we combine them up with this very heavy bedrockium ingot, uh, if we do the optifine zoom now, it's just like super crazy. Uh, if we combine that up with the bedrockium ingot, we should get the hyper node, uh, the hyper transfer node, the node of tra transfer node of hyper energy. One of those. We'll get this hyper node of trans this transfer node of hyper energy. Wow. Uh, how many times can I say that wrong? And then we should be pretty much just be able to make this guy because we have the eight culinary generators uh, and we can just go. So we'll take this guy. Come on. There we go. We'll take this thing. We will combine it up. We'll use the normal crafting table because we're old school like that. We'll throw those together. That gets us a 64x culinary generator. And now, if we throw this down over here, uh, it's actually it's not going to do anything different to what the old one did in, in all actuality. It's just going to do it faster. So now, if you put this down like that, it's going to produce the same amount of power that the old one produced. But it should go through toast a lot faster than the last one did. You can see, if we look in here, toast lasts quite a long time. If we wait for that... To, uh, to get down to zero. I think it lasts maybe 15, 20 seconds. 12 seconds. So it lasts about 13 seconds in there. In here, it lasts like two seconds. So this thing is producing 1,792 redstone flux as opposed to 224 in here. And But it's doing it a lot faster. You can see the redstone flux is being produced much, much faster. It's going through the toast a lot quicker, 
which is very nice. And basically, what we could do now is we could go ahead and take all of these. You know, we got one, two, three. We got eight more. We could turn that into just another one of these. Have two 64 explosive generators because really, that transfer load of hyper energy wasn't too hard to make. So, what I might do is actually between episodes here. Uh, make a bunch more of these normal Clonio generators, the uh, 8x ones, that is. Uh, and then try and make a bunch more of these 64x ones. Maybe try and get seven of them to fill this top row. That would be kind of insane. And would definitely put a bit of stress onto our uh, our wheat farm. And hopefully actually start to get some use out of it. Because right now, it's kind of just sitting there backed up on wheat. But uh, only time will tell how this will, uh, like affect our wheat farm. We'll see if it actually starts to, uh, to to use up all of our wheat. I'm not quite sure what it is over here that's causing us to take damage. It doesn't do it anywhere else. Just there, which is really annoying. But yeah, what I'll do between episodes, guys, is I will turn these eight here into a 64x generator. I will try and make a few more 64x generators. I may upgrade this thing over here to try and get the octuple compressed cobblestone just as a little milestone to, uh, to see if we can get it, although we can do it without it. Although we are going to run out diamonds at some point, so we may well want to do it just to save on diamonds in the future. But for now, guys, I'm going to end it this episode there thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to hit like it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below and i will see you guys next time